Okay, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at the analytical method of vector resolution and basically that means using some trigonometry to uh, resolve a vector into its x and y components. Uh, the first thing we need to do is kind of make a quick sketch. We're going to be less particular about our representation of the vector uh, because we won't be using uh, protractors and rulers to actually get the components. So what I'm going to do is just make a sketch of 12 meters per second at 140 degrees. So I have a velocity vector. I know that it's going to be 40 degrees above uh, the negative x-axis. So let's say that uh, this is roughly 45, so I'm going to be a little bit less than that. Let's call it that. And I can label this as a vector A if I want to. So vector A is um, 12 meters per second at 45 degrees. Then what I'm going to do is drop some construction lines uh, from the end of the vector. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Let's try that again. Uh, from the end of the ray all the way back to the uh, horizontal and the vertical axis. So now that I've sketched those construction lines in, I can go ahead and draw in the components. This is just like the graphical method at this point but uh, we will change things shortly. So I've drawn in the uh, X and the Y components here. And I can go ahead and label them. I'll call that A sub Y since it's the vertical component. And I'll call this one A sub X since it's the horizontal component. Uh, what I need to do now is recognize that I'm looking at a right triangle. And it's perhaps most clear to see that if I were to make a copy of this. Uh, and I, I don't need to, you know, what. Um, I don't need to be really formal about this, but if I were to take AY and simply slide it down here uh, to the end, we would see the triangle that we're interested in talking about. We're interested in talking about this triangle with this angle here, theta. Um, and I could kind of shade it in in uh, this blue uh, stripes so you can kind of see the right triangle that we're paying attention to. This is, of course, our right angle in that right triangle. I'm going to um, write in some math terms here. This is the hypotenuse of that right triangle. Since this is the angle theta that we're talking about, then this is going to be the adjacent side. And over here is going to be the opposite side uh, of that right triangle. And uh, off to the side, I'm just going to kind of also remind you, uh, maybe you've learned this as Sokotoa. So, uh, the sine of the angle theta is the ratio of the opposite side uh, over the hypotenuse. The cosine of the angle theta is the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. And the tangent uh, of the angle theta is the ratio of the opposite over the adjacent side. So you should be somewhat familiar with these kind of uh, Sokotoa terms here. Let me go ahead and box these in. You should have probably seen this uh, formally in a pre-calculus class, uh, but maybe in some of your other math classes as well. Okay, so we want to find a trig function uh, right now. We have A. We know that this side of the triangle is 12 units. Uh, so I'll put that in parentheses. So we know this side, and we know the angle is 140 degrees. So we, both, uh, we, we know both the hypotenuse and the angle. And we're trying to find something that will answer the question, what is a sub x, or the horizontal component of the vector? You'll notice here that the uh, cosine relationship helps, helps us out. It's got the angle and the hypotenuse in it, and it only has the adjacent side that's not known, which is ultimately a sub x. So let me go ahead and uh, write this out. Uh, I'll write it down here. So I can write this out in uh, simple terms as simply cosine theta is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. But if I were to get rid of these uh, math terms and change them over into physics terms, I should recognize that um, the uh, adjacent side is actually the x component of the vector. And the hypotenuse is the actual vector itself, a. So Basically, what I have then is cosine theta is equal to a sub x over a. Now, if I multiply both sides by a, I eliminate the a from the right-hand side, and I'm left with this expression, a cosine theta is equal to a sub x. This is a big idea. It's a big idea because it allows us to numerically uh, calculate um, 
the x component of the vector without spending uh, a lot of time making this formal sketch like you have to do when you're using the uh, graphical method of uh, vector resolution. So if I were to plug these uh, numbers into my calculator, I'll go ahead and write that in red here, the actual value of A is 12 meters per second. And I'm going to multiply that quantity times the cosine of the angle 140. Now I can uh, use the complement uh, of 40 degrees here. This is actual 40 degrees, but the complement here um, is going to give me 140 degrees. I can choose either of those. I'll get the same numeric answer, except if I reference the positive x-axis with that angle, it'll actually tell me, my calculator will tell me, whether the component is positive or negative. Now, simply looking at the x component of A, you should recognize that it's pointing to the left on the horizontal axis, so it should be negative. So when I basically plug this into my calculator, I get something on the order of negative 9.2. And of course, our units are still uh, meters per second. Uh, so that's the cosine function. And that answers the question about the horizontal component. Now if I take a look at the sine uh, relationship, that's going to relate theta and the hypotenuse, and it's going to give me the opposite side, which is what I'm looking for, because the opposite side, as you can see from our sketch here, is the y component uh, of the vector. So in a similar way, I can now say then that, uh, and I'll do this in a different color, I can say that the sine of theta is uh, the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse, or in physics terms, a sub y over the actual vector a itself. Multiplying uh, both sides of this by a, uh, the a's cancel out on the right, and I'm left with the expression a times the sine of theta is equal to the y component. Uh, and just like before, I've boxed it in. I'm going to go ahead and box this in as well. This is a, another big idea. I can find the vertical component of, that, of a vector by multiplying the magnitude of that vector uh, times the sine of the angle. So let's go ahead and do that again. I'm going to get 12 meters per second. I'm substituting in for A times the sine of 140 degrees. Again, I'm referencing the angle all the way back to the um, positive x-axis, and that's going to be A sub y. Uh, this should be a positive quantity. I can see that here by recognizing that a sub y is pointing in the up or the positive y direction. So I should expect a positive answer when I run that through my calculator and I get 7.7 .7 meters per second is equal to the y component of the vector. So uh, I guess I could present this a little bit more formally. My final answer then, the components uh, a sub x is uh, negative 9.2 meters per second, and A sub Y uh, should be positive, and it's 7.7 uh, .7, uh, meters per second. And those would be uh, acceptable answers, um, and the best, I, re I really think kind of the, the fastest way to do this. Once you get good at using these trig functions, it takes no time at all to, uh, to get this done.